Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another tutorial. I have more of these planned, but I also have more videos going over gear and camera coming in the future. I have one in the works over why I'm leaving Nikon. It's a sad decision. I've been with Nikon for years and it's been amazing, but if you'd like to know what camera system I'm switching to and why, subscribe and you'll see that video in the future. For this tutorial, I'm going to be going over the tone mapping persona in an Affinity Photo. Not much has changed in the tone mapping persona since version 1, so this tutorial will work with both versions of Affinity Photo. The only difference is the icon for the tone mapping has changed. Tone mapping is an amazingly powerful tool. It can easily create a highly detailed HDR type look out of a single photo. It is a great tool for landscapes and wildlife. A word of caution though, my main area of focus is portraits. And while you can use tone mapping for portraits, I only do so sparingly for certain photos because it can really pull out fine detail out of the skin. It can create dark spots on the skin, both which aren't flattering to the subject. In a future video, I could show you how I use tone mapping for portraits. So if you'd like to see me go over that, comment down below. This is a photo that I'll be using for the tutorial. I took this photo about a year ago during a trip to Texas. It's a nice image, but everything is backlit and silhouetted. What I really want to do with this photo is pull out more detail out of the shadows and really make this picture pop. And that's where tone mapping comes into play. So right away with every photo I do, I hit Control J or right click and duplicate it. That way we always have the original photo we can fall back on for any reason. Now if we tried to change this photo right now without using tone mapping and try to pull detail out of the shadows, drop the contrast down a little bit, bump the brightness up, go back to our shadows, bump the shadows up, you're going to get a really flat image. Not really pulling a whole lot of detail out of this image to get what's in the shadow to show up. Delete those. Duplicate it again. And for here, we're going to go into the tone mapping persona. So up here in your top left, depending on your machine and how large the picture file is, this could take some time. And right off the bat, once you open up the tone mapping persona, you can see tone compression is already up at 100%. If we can drop it down, we have our original image, nothing's changed, but by default, tone compression will be at 100%. You have all your presets on the left, you can go through. You can get some really unique looks out of it if you go to the crazy folder. Down to the bottom, I've used this preset in a lot of my photos. I really like the purple, the dark, dramatic feel that you can get out of this preset. It just creates a really unique look. But we're gonna go back up to the default, go back to the first one and drop our tone compression down. So we can start with a fresh image. On the right, this is all we're going to be working with. We have our tone compression, which again works kind of like contrast. It's going to bump up detail, increase the highlights, increase the tone compression of the shadows, and then local contrast does it with detail in the image. So if we bump both of them all the way up, you can see we get a very HDR type look. And from here, we can just play around with these sliders to get the look that we want. I want something highly detailed because I want the information coming out from the shadows. Zoom in, it was just a black silhouette. Now we can bump everything up and really pull that detail. One thing to notice is you will be getting a lot of noise the more you go up with the local contrast, the more noise is gonna come out because it's pulling all that fine detail, that fine contrast out of all the pixels in the image. Moving down, you have your exposure tools. You have your exposure. Keep that at zero. Black point, I never really have gone past 2% because it is very strong. Even at 5%, you can see how much it actually crushes the blacks already. Brightness, we can bump up a little bit just to help increase that HDR look. And then the rest of the tools are everything that you have on the main page. You have your contrast, your saturation and vibrance. I'm gonna bump vibrance up a little bit more. You have your white balance, your shadows and highlights, detail refinement, if you want to bump the sharpness of this image up a little bit more. I don't want to do that, so I'll just click that. And then you have your curves, you have your master curve along with your red, green, and blue. I'm going to go in the white balance and make this image a little bit more warm. Since I did that, I do want to bump up the brightness a little bit more. There we go. Once you're done with editing in the tone mapping persona, you can go up to the top left and hit apply. And there we have our tone mapped image. We can unclick that and go back to the original. Click it again, and we have our tone mapped HDR type image. One thing I do recommend is any correction that you want to do in the photo, do it before you tone map it. So if we look right here at this 
lens flare coming through. We can go to our in-painting brush tool. Left bracket to decrease, right bracket to increase it. And we'll just swipe it out. I can, I mean, if you pixel peep, I can still see where that image was. Undo that, go back to the original because everything's softer and not as pixelated because of that local contrast that pulls all the pixels out. It's easier to correct it first before going into the tone mapping persona. But from there, you can see our original image and our new HDR image. The clouds have a lot more detail in them. Statue does. Going back to the statue, still with our in-painting brush tool. You didn't really see this detail before because it was all silhouetted. It was there, but it really wasn't noticeable. So there's times where after tone mapping, you're going to have to go in and clean up a little bit more. Because all that extra detail is pulled out of that image now. Tone mapping is a phenomenal tool. Highly recommend it. Get used to it because you can create some really unique looking images using just that one tool. Again, I got more videos coming in the future, so subscribe if you'd like. I hope this tutorial helped you. Thank you very much for watching, and everyone have a wonderful day.